And my mum was really there for me at a time that I got really depressed. Now brace yourself, we're about to talk about depression. It gon' get sexy, crumb, crumb. <laughs> Now, people don't like to talk about depression because it's not a sexy subject. Our physical health, you'll happily share and talk to people about. You'll share it on all your social media sites about how you're feeling physically if you've lost weight. But our mental health, we're not in as much of a hurry to share. And I think that's such a shame that we don't put as much significance on our mental health because it's just as fucking valuable. Very often, the two are so related. If you're not physically feeling well, maybe mentally you need some work. And mentally, you need some work. Maybe physically, you need to do something. Because you'll quite happily go to the gym and you'll spend, I don't know, anything from £25 a month. We're in London. Come on, we're £105 a month. Um, <laughs> going to the gym to work out, right? And I wish we had that kind of same investment in our mental health, it's just as important. Like, wouldn't it be cool if there was like a mental health gym? Somewhere that was encouraged and cool to go to, babe. Somewhere that you could be like there, and you could be like, hey, Barry, good to see you. Yeah, I'm just working out my ex boyfriend issues. That's right. <laughs> just working out my ex boyfriend issues. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, if you like that, well, when I'm nice and strong, I'm going to try to tackle my daddy ones. <laughs> Not strong enough yet for the daddy ones, okay. <laughs> Just keep working on next boyfriend because you don't want to hurt yourself. <laughs> Are the two related? Mm, they couldn't possibly be. <laughs> no relation here. <laughs> If you think about mental health, sometimes maybe it's not your fault, babe. Maybe if we're feeling really shit about ourselves, maybe it's actually not technically our fault. Maybe there's something more going on. Maybe it's your genetics. Like, there's a whole nature-nurture debate. Maybe fucking you were born with it. It's like, hey, what did you get from your mama? I got my big, beautiful brown ass. What did you get from your mama? I got bipolar. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and depression is so common. There's so many of us that suffer with it. And I think there's two types of depression. I think there's the first type where you literally cannot get out of bed or face the day because it's easier to fall asleep than try and deal with what your head is doing to yourself because it's so exhausting, feeling so invaluable and so shit about yourself constantly. And maybe when you see a train going past, you think, fuck it, I'll jump. Not because you want to kill yourself or because you want to hurt people around you, but because it's so fucking exhausting feeling this shit about yourself in your own head constantly. You just want some relief and some respite for a bit, right? And there's a second type of depression, which is the one that I think is a bit more popular. I'll take that too, please. Thank you. <laughs> and that's the one where I get every now and then where you'll wake up in the morning and you'll be like, well, I mean, I hate my life, but fuck it, I'll still make a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> debate and maybe it's our environment growing up maybe our environment affected how we deal with things and how capable we are with dealing with things that's why I think mental health is so important to be educated in schools from a young age so that we've got the tools to be able to support ourselves so when shit does hit the fan we're empowered enough to be able to deal with it right because I've got loads of qualities being a middle child for example that I share with other middle children that's that's nothing from genetics that's just my environment for example let's have a little experiment give me a cheer if you're a middle child who's a middle child <laughs> Diplomatic, great communicator, see, very sociable, Ooh, very diplomatic. That's one of our key skills. When the shit hits the fan, you want a middle child on board. Do you know why we're so good at handling a drama or if a fight kicking off? Because we're so used to being like, babe, what do you do? Come on now, give it back, guys. Let's be friends, right? We're so used to it. We're also very attractive and fabulous in bed, so... <laughs> That's a middle child. Um, eldest, give me a tribute of the eldest. <laughs> see, natural leaders, natural fucking leaders, right? People often come to you for advice. Do you know why they come to you first? Because you're the first lot to fuck it up in the family. So, that's why they come to you, babe. That's why they come to you. And then, of course, finally got the youngest. Give me a cheer if you're the youngest. Oh, look at me, look at me! So needy, aren't they? And I'm not even going to do the only child because you've not had enough attention all your lives, OK? <laughs> Only children. <laughs> Only children, you've got no idea how easy you've had it. <laughs> now, my little brother's the youngest in my family, right? And he was always complaining that he was depressed. And I'd be like, shut up, you're a twat. I think it really, <laughs> I think it really helped. And uh, Christmas, not long ago, we had a really shit Christmas. We had a hor horrible Christmas, right? Christmas not long ago, my little brother took an overdose and he tried to kill himself. Now, has anybody here ever tried to kill themselves before? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Hashtag awkward. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened, right? Uh, Christmas Day is his birthday, right? So um, in this Polish tradition that we celebrate Christmas Eve more so than Christmas Day. So we, my mum carries on tradition here, right? And also because it's his birthday and Christmas Day, we like to make more of it, separate the two. 
So on Christmas Eve, what you do is you don't eat all day. You're not allowed any food all day. And then when the first star comes out, you sit down, you lay out all the food, and you start eating. But you're not allowed any meat all day, right? And you're quite hungry. Like, I go around the rest of the day and be like, Mum, but I'm starving. She's like, you're hardly starving. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> sat around the table, right? And no matter how many people are sat around the table, you've got to save a place for Jesus. <laughs> Just in case Jesus drops by. Because <laughs> you'd sure hate it if the one year you're like, Mama, I'm a bit squashed. I'm just going to sing Jesus cheer. All of a sudden, ding dong. Ah! Jesus, what? There's no cheer. Ah, I'm going next door. No, Jesus. <laughs> right. So we saved a place for Jesus, right? We're all sat at the table, we're like, oh, is Jesus coming round? I hope Jesus coming round. Oh, mum, where's Jesus? Oh, it's at the doorbell or the wind. Oh, where's Jesus? Oh. <laughs> and my mum's always like, Louisa, stop mocking Jesus. I'm like, who's mocking him? Hello, apparently he's always here. I don't know why I have to save him a seat, but you know. <laughs> She's like, Louisa, stop being so rude about Jesus. I'm like, hello, who's being rude? He's not eating his fish. <laughs> <laughs> dinner right and it was really nice <laughs> and everyone just did their own thing right and it uh, got to midnight and I ran up to my brother's room to sing happy birthday to him because what guy doesn't like happy birthday being sung him by his older sister hello right <laughs> so I ran in and in his room he was kind of hanging off the bed right and he's hanging off the bed and his arm and leg were all off and he was all out of it and um his eyes were like rolled to the back of his head and uh, he didn't look well and it was clear that he'd taken an overdose he took an overdose of pills right and we rushed him into A&E, and in A&E, they put him in a separate room. They didn't have him out on the main wall with everybody else. They kind of had him hidden from everybody, right? I'm there with him, and uh, it's a really stressful time, right? Because you feel really like you don't know what to do in this situation. And uh, my mum is distraught, right? She's devastated. So she's like, outside, like, cleaning the car, whatever she's doing. Um, <laughs> apparently, it helps. But, uh, <laughs> So it's just me sat in the room with him, and I remember feeling so embarrassed. And I know that's not a nice thing to admit to, but I remember feeling so embarrassed and so ashamed. Because I've got a good family, right? I've got a really good family. Somebody trying to kill themselves doesn't happen in my family, but here I am. And he's just tried to do it. And I'm sat there with him, right? And I didn't know what to do, because nobody tells you what to do in that situation. And the nurse came in, and I was so relieved, because I thought, well, at least he'll get the professional help that he needs now, right? At least he'll get professional help now, so maybe this is like a silver lining, right? Because he was complaining of depression for a long time, and none of us ever took him seriously, because every time that he'd say he was depressed, I would always be like, um, that's because nobody likes you. So... <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know when I'm feeling like, oh, I'm really depressed, I hate myself. Um, it usually just means that I'm hungry. <laughs> Would you like a sandwich? <laughs> that was how much I tried to help him, right? So I was so relieved when the nurse came in. And she goes, hi there, Miss Omelomelon. <laughs> <laughs> it's Omelan. It's very simple, sorry. Um, unfortunately, your brother's not scored enough points to see a doctor or a psychiatrist at this time. Sorry, not enough points, no, he hasn't. See, because you're here with him, you go down as his primary carer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna monitor him and then we're gonna send him home with you and then you can look after him and bring him back to see a doctor in six to eight weeks time, all right? No, no you can't have me as a primary carer. I fucking got him here in the first place. Don't fucking put him out with me. Right? <laughs> no, it's just the way it, it's just the way it works. He hasn't scored enough points, I'm sorry. So we're just gonna make sure he's stable. And once we're sure he's stable, we'll send him back with you, okay? Okay. So you can't see, like, just a doctor for, like, five minutes just for, like, a little chat? No. No, sorry. Oh, OK. Sure. Um, did you hear that, mate? Um, you didn't get enough points? Um, so you're going to have to do something more crazy! <laughs> <laughs> and I remember feeling really embarrassed and really ashamed and really desperate. I was so desperate for somebody to take care of the situation, so I rang my dad. I don't speak to him very often, but I didn't know who else to call, right? So I ring my dad and I go, hi, dad, it's Louisa. Who? Louisa, your daughter. Hello. Hi. Listen, it's about your son. I'm in A&E with him and um, I, he's all right, he's stable, but I just needed to tell you that he's taken an overdose and he's, um, he's tried to kill himself. I didn't know who else to call, so I'm calling you because I'm sorry to break you up and I'm sorry to bother you. So I just didn't know who to... Louisa, listen to me. Louisa, listen to me. Thank you for calling me. Here's what I want you to do. Why don't you get him to give me a call when he gets out. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy! <laughs> Merry Christmas! You sure are making those issues louder by the day, Daddy! <laughs> And I remember 
Fide. Not very Beyonce. <laughs> not Beyonce at all. And it's not a nice, strong, independent woman thing to admit to, but I remember feeling so desperate for a man to come in and be like, I got this. I'm going to take care of you and your family. And there wasn't that figure. Because all I can see is my family falling apart in front of me. And I'm sat next to him. And I don't know what to say to him. I'm not in a position to say, you're going to be fine. Everything's going to be OK. I'm going to take care of you. Because everything's not OK. Because it's because he's been with me that he's here. So you tell me, what do I say to him now to make sure that tomorrow, for the 20 seconds that I'm not watching him like a hawk, that he doesn't try to do it again. But tomorrow, he'll succeed. So you tell me, what the fuck do I say to him now to make him not feel the need to do that? again and nobody tells you what to say I remember looking at him and feeling like you are so loved you could not be more loved you have no idea how very very loved you are please don't ever feel the need to do this again if you ever feel like this again you come and talk to me because I'm your sister I've got your back you come and ask me okay and I'll always remember it because as the clock hit five o'clock in the morning, and he stirs and he goes, Louisa, I'm just so tired. I'll never forget what I said to him. Because I turned to him and I went, You're tired! <laughs> Next time you fancy having a go at killing yourself, next time you want to have a go at killing yourself, do us all a favour and come and ask me how! <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> See what I mean? You don't love me. Nobody loves me. None of you love me. Nobody loves me. Nobody loves you. Nobody loves you. I broke your shit up with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 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 Mm.